Hello everyone, it's Fred again from Notes of a Nomad. This is video number 80. And today I'm going to talk about my dad. Now, this may not be of interest to everyone, but my grandchildren or my future um, descendants might want to know a little bit about my dad. I thought I would do this. What really prompted this was I was listening to some talk about you know, the, how impactful your parents can have on you. And I had a great dad, which meant I had a wonderful childhood. Uh, my dad came across from Wales when he was probably at a guess around 10 or 11 years old on a boat with his brother and his mother because his father died in a coal mining accident in Wales. And I believe his mother had a brother in Port Arthur or Thunder Bay, Northern Ontario. So the family came across there. I believe that she had remarried and her husband may have come across with them. My cousin in Thunder Bay knows more about that part than I do, but that's what I think she told me not too long ago. So uh, by about the age of 13, uh, there was a lot of other children in the family too, a couple more daughters and so on. And my father was told to leave. He was the oldest and he went and lived with someone else. Again, my cousin knows who that person was. So at the age of 13 or 14, he was on his own or lived with uh, someone else. I know one job he had was in, during the depression in the 1930s which if he was born in 1914, which is what he said, he wasn't sure, he said it was wrong on his birth certificate. Anyway, if he was born in 1914, he would have been in the 1930s, uh, you know, in his older teenage years and maybe his early 20s, he worked on the road construction, driving teams of horses which is where they were building roads, I guess the Trans-Canada Highway in Northern Ontario, working for next to nothing. But ultimately he got a job in Saskatchewan Wheat Pool. And the Saskatchewan Wheat Pool had a lot of grain terminals in Thunder Bay. And in 1956, when I was 13 years old, uh, our family was transferred from Thunder Bay to Vancouver, where Saskatchewan Wheat Pool was going to open up a grain elevator. For many years, they rented one, but in the 1960s, late 1960s, I had already left uh, Canada and was living in South Africa. They built this brand new grain elevator in northern, on, on the northern shore in North Vancouver. It was a $21.5 million dollar grain elevator, and this was a picture of my dad in front of it when they were um, opened it. It was the official opening, and there was a newspaper article. I can show you briefly the newspaper article and telling you the 21.5 million grain elevator from Saskatchewan Wheat Pool, and my dad was the superintendent by that time of the grain elevator. So let's just show you the next picture. There it is here. And that's just, the, again, a picture of my dad uh, in the newspaper, which was dated June the 13th, 1968, was when they opened the grain elevator and the article. So my dad is here, and that was Jack Loney. I remember he, my dad worked for him for many years. So that was my dad's experience in the grain elevator, which he worked 30 years. Now, not a lot of people work for one company for 30 years, but this was my dad's, I think it might be his retirement or getting his 30 year pin. Again, I was in South Africa when this happened. I've never seen him wear a shirt and tie in my life. So this is the only picture I have of him wearing a shirt and tie, receiving his 30 year pin, which I have a, actually I have a picture of it as well, but I actually have the pin. It's a little gold pin after 30 years. And my dad loved fishing. If you ever thought I showed you some pictures at the beginning, there was always fishing. Uh, we always had trout in our fridge. Speckled trout was his favorite fish. And he would go fishing every opportunity he could. And uh, I remember 
there being minnows for bait downstairs in our basement, uh, going to collect dewworms at nighttime so that he could use the worms for bait, and him taking me out in the bush. Uh, I didn't do much fishing. It was I was eaten by the mosquitoes and black flies. Couldn't do much because if I threw a rock in the water, he'd say, hey, you're scaring the fish away. But my dad was a great guy. He was very calm, I think, because of all the fishing he did. He passed away around 1979, so at the age of 65. So I've outlived my dad by ooh, almost 15 years now, 14 and a half years. So that's my dad. He was wonderful. I had a great childhood, and I... Um, was thinking about, hey, what happened in my childhood? And I had very little trauma. The only one time I remember he really gave me a strapping because I had stolen five cents and I bought a firecracker, one of those one that just, I don't know, burnt, uh, made a flame, nothing exciting for five cents in those days. But he said he had to give me a spanking because I had lied about the five cents. It was the kids across the street who said, oh, he bought, had this wonderful firecracker. And of course, I cringed. And my dad said, why are you cringing about buying a firecracker? And eventually, uh, I had to fess up that I had taken five cents off of the waffle iron on the, in the kitchen. And uh, I don't think uh, I ever told a lie after that. If it was, it was very little lies what you call a white lie when I was an adult, but man, I've learned from that. That's about the only incident I can remember. My dad took me to Little League Baseball. I played Little League Baseball and he practiced with me uh, while I was pitching at home. So he was a great dad. So that's a little bit from about my family, which my great-grandchildren and future uh, descendants might be interested in. His name was Raymond Joseph, Joseph Edward Raymond Jones. He went by the name of Ray Jones. So with that, I'll say au revoir, adios. Bye for now. Wishing you, your family and friends, lots of love and laughter. From Bye for now from Fred and Notes of a Nomad.